and welcome back to the Snap Revise YouTube channel. I'm Amy and in this video today, we're going to have a look at some of your chemistry course content in a wider context, trying to take that specification learning into the real world. Organic chemistry is covered by AQA, OCR and Edexcel, so this video should be useful to you no matter what exam board you're taking. If you want to quickly brush up on your alkanes knowledge before watching this video, please do check out the Snap Revise A-Level Chemistry playlist, particularly our alkanes video, which will give you all the information that you need to know for your course content. Your organic chemistry revision, you may or may not be surprised to know, has some pretty serious real world implications with economic and environmental impacts that have shaped the world in which we live. This is crude oil. This thick oozy substance is naturally occurring and has been made over millions of years in the Earth's crust. If we were able to somehow take a dive back into the ocean 400 million years ago, we would see all kinds of life. There would be vertebrate life as well as invertebrate life, all swimming around, living and doing what they do in the ocean. As with all life forms, they eventually die. And when they do, they drop to the bottom of the sea. This is where crude oil begins its formation. It's the carbon which was in these life forms that forms the hydrocarbons that are in crude oil, which have been made over millions of years of compression and heat from within the Earth's core. Crude oil is the term that we give to the oil that comes straight up from the Earth's crust. It hasn't been adapted in any way to give us the products that we use from crude oil. To do this, it needs to go through a distillation process. You learn about this at school, fractional distillation. This is to separate the hydrocarbon chains of different lengths. And it can also help to remove the impurities that can be found in crude oil, such as sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen. It's certainly a lucrative product, and it's why people all over the world have endeavored to find it. If you're watching this video today, you have unwittingly benefited from the oil age. So cool because in this time, we have learned how to extract huge amounts of oil from the earth and turn it into usable goods, from pharmaceutical to fuels and plastics. There's no denying that oil is a kind of wonder product. We've managed to turn it into lots of different things and use it to advance our societies and technology. However, there are some pretty dire impacts upon the environment of using these hydrocarbons from direct pollution into the atmosphere to the product itself, which when leaked into the environment can cause all sorts of trouble. The reason why we continue to use oil and gas despite these environmental issues is that it is such a valuable resource. The oil and gas sector makes up a huge proportion of the world's economy, as well as being the very means by which we transport all kinds of goods and services around the globe. In fact, humans have used oil for thousands of years, but it wasn't until we discovered that kerosene could be extracted from crude oil that demand for it really went up. By the early 20th century, oil was the most valuable commodity traded on world markets. Now around the world, there are thousands of oil companies which continue to extract and transport the oil for refining, largely in the USA, in Russia and Saudi Arabia. But there is a problem. Like I said, this is a finite product. Once we run out, there's no more to use. It takes millions of years to form and there are significant issues associated with its extraction. The way in which we extract oil from the earth is by using drilling rigs. Essentially what these are are platforms which drill a big hole down to try and reach oil wells deep below the earth's surface to then pump the oil back up to the surface to be refined. You have probably seen videos of oil rigs at sea which operate in the same way, but obviously they have to get through all that water before they can drill down into the Earth's crust. Offshore oil drilling was in fact a fantastic branch out from just drilling on land because it opened up a whole load of oil fields to people which we originally didn't think we would be able to access. This placed a lot of confidence in a future where we could continue to use hydrocarbons as fuel and proved to be beneficial for lots of smaller countries as it allowed them to develop energy independence. What this means is that they no longer relied on larger countries to supply them with energy. As a result, economies also started to boom in smaller countries so offshore oil drilling was a pretty good thing. However, offshore drilling is an incredibly dangerous endeavor with severe environmental consequences when things go wrong. This image shows Deepwater Horizon, a semi-submersible oil rig which exploded in April 2010. This industrial disaster was caused when high-pressured methane gas, which was in the oil well that they were drilling, entered the conduit which took the oil from the seabed up to the surface. At the surface, it ignited and ended up exploding the oil rig, 
killing 11 people and triggering an oil leak which carried on for 87 days. It's estimated that 795 million litres of oil was leaked into the ocean during this time, with the cleanup efforts not even being finished until four years later in 2014 the effects of this oil are being felt to this day. Containment booms were used to physically gather the oil from the surface of the sea, emulsifying agents were sprayed down onto the sea surface to break down the oil, and vessels were brought in to physically remove the oil by filtering it from the seawater or setting fire to it so that it would burn off the sea surface. One method in the cleanup which I particularly like are the oil-eating microbes. These are bacteria that they place on the oil slicks to eat up the oil so that it couldn't spread any further and cause any any more damage to the wildlife in the surrounding area. This disaster has had severe long-term effects on the wildlife and people in the region. Oil that has collected on bird feathers killed a lot of birds and toxins within the hydrocarbon mixture got into the bodies of various marine wildlife from tuna to dolphins and other fish. These toxins can be carcinogenic and so these are really really severe consequences of an oil leak. It was reported that 138 people involved in the cleanup efforts reported long-term effects later on that were believed to have been caused by their exposure to the oil. Following this disaster and the cases of other oil spills, we've had to take a real look at our future with oil. We've used this wonder product to a point where its combustion is literally changing the climate of the planet on which we live and having severe consequences for all life, not just wildlife, but for humans too. The atmospheric pollution that's caused by burning hydrocarbons has had some serious impacts upon human health. You're probably very aware of the fact that climate change is on the agenda at the moment and people are thinking about what we can do to try and secure a better future for the planet. To put it simply, renewable energy is the way forward. We need to find ways that we can power our lives without destroying the planet in the process. I really truly hope that in my lifetime we will see changes where we move away from fossil fuels to green energy and world leaders are working on solutions to that at the moment with the COP26 summit which is happening in Glasgow. This is great news for me, I personally don't want to live in a world where breathing the air could kill me. It's also a great reason to continue studying chemistry. Engineers are going to be needed in the very near future to help solve the these green issues so having an understanding of chemistry will be very beneficial to you when it comes to going to university and eventually getting a job. I find this whole topic very interesting because we are so reliant on fossil fuels it's going to be a pretty hefty challenge to try and move away from our current consumption to a future where we use alternative energy sources. Of course renewable energy makes a lot of sense it kind of begs the question as to why nobody ever thought of it before. Maybe crude oil was just the easiest option at the time. It made a lot of people rich, so that's probably why they carried on using it. Anyway, what do you think about crude oil and the shift to green energy? Let us know in the comments, and if you found this video helpful, please do give us a like. We have loads of other content as well as these videos. There are the teaching videos, live streamed web classes, all the help you could possibly need to get you through your A-level revision. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Snaprovise YouTube channel up here and to check out the A-Level Chemistry playlist just here.